seven, eight, nine, thirty paces. X marks the spot. Ahoy, land lovers! I be Captain Tiki Fez, and today I be showing you a pirate drawing with palm trees and calm seas. Ah, I'm a poet, and you didn't even know it. A pirate ship fast and true. So if that be to your liking, then get your pencil and your paper, and be quick about it, me hearties. I'll wait while you get some. Catch up with my friend Long Tom. It's been a long time since I've seen ya. <laughs> You've lost weight. <laughs> Last time I saw Tom, he was complaining of stabbing pains in the chest. <laughs> Now, if ye be having your pencil and your paper, then heave anchor and set sail with me on this drawing. But first, let me go below decks to change. Hi, I'm Stephen Harper. I'm an artist, but I'm also an author. I write comic books and graphic novels like Quest for the Golden Butterfly, Episode 1, out soon, momentarily, like any minute now! So soon I can just taste it! Very soon! From Tiki Fest Comics. Today, I'd like to show you how to draw this pirate drawing right. with all sorts of piratical adventures, treasure to bury, palm trees to sun under, and a pirate ship to escape on. So, if you've got a pencil and a paper and you're ready to go, we can dive on in this drawing. Now remember, I'm trying to just give you some ideas and give you a place to start. If there's something you want to do differently, something you want to add, something you want to subtract, don't feel like you have to do it exactly like I do. Do it your own way, that's perfectly fine. By the way, thanks to everybody who's come to me lately and told me about subscribing to the videos. I really do appreciate it. It's nice to have you subscribing. So, here we go, jump on in, and we will get things started. I'm going to start about halfway up my page, uh, a little bit to the right side of my paper, and I'm going to start by just drawing one flat line. From the edge of this line, I'm going to angle a line up and out this way, and one up and out this way. The next thing I'm going to show you is probably the trickiest part of the whole thing. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to start a line on one side that kind of dips down, goes up, dips down again, comes back up. A little bit like a roller coaster. Let's take a look at that again. Inside this, not at the very outside edges, but in a little bit from each side, I'm going to draw a letter U shape. My favorite pirate was always Blackbeard when I was a kid. Edward Teach would be his name. Uh, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put a big black beard all the way around. Now that's just kind of a scribbly zigzag line all the way around. You're welcome to do it any way you'd like. Now, we need some eyes for our pirate. What I like to do is kind of just a, uh, a dot with a little line above it. Same thing over here, a dot with a line above it. They kind of look a little bit like commas in a book. If you haven't read a book, you might want to do that. They're pretty cool. We also need some eyebrows. That's what I do when I go into a store. I don't like to buy anything. Eyebrows. The uh, eyebrows need to kind of go in like this. So just a line that goes down, kind of comes out from underneath there. Now we need a nose for our pirate, as everybody knows. I'm just going to draw a letter L, just a line that goes down, hangs a right, goes back that way. Yeah. Next thing I want to do, I need to give my pirate a mustache. Feel free to use mine. If you'd like to give your pirate a mustache like mine, I mustache if you know how to do it. It's pretty simple. You draw a line from the nose going down, then back up and curling. On the other side, down, up and curling. In the middle, you fill it in. Now that'll give you a white mustache, and if you want it darker, then you can just scribble it in like that. We need our pirate to have some teeth, or a mouth or something. 
I'm going to make my pirate smiling because, hey, why wouldn't they be happy? I'm going to draw a line that goes down, across, and back up. And then I need to draw this little V shape right here. It's called a soul patch sometimes. I'm going to draw that right underneath. There we go. We have our pirate. Now, you're welcome to add more things to the beard if you'd like. Blackbeard actually used to take lit matches and weave them into his beard and light them so that his whole head would be wreathed in smoke and fire. Sounds pretty frightening to me. I'm not going to make my pirate quite that scary, but you can if you want to. I want to put a, uh, a skull up at the top of his hat, like for the skull and crossbones, which, by the way, was the pirate flag. A lot of different pirates had different insignia on their flag artworks to let people know who they were and what they wanted. I'm going to take a letter C and roll it on its side, kind of open. Underneath that, I'm going to put another U shape. That gives me the basic skull shape. Next thing we want is a black circle over here, black circle over here for the eyes, and then we need a nose. The nose is just going to be a triangle. And then for the teeth, what I like to do is just put some up and down lines with a side to side line across it. That's usually enough to give most people the idea of what it is. The right side and the left side. I'm going to draw two short little lines coming out that way. Two short little lines coming out this way. Same thing over here. Two short little lines. Two short little lines. I'm making kind of an, a letter X back behind that skull. And now to make it look like bones, I'm going to draw a number three and a number three, a backwards number three, and a backwards number three. We have our pirate head, we have our pirate hat. Next thing I'm going to do is move a little bit further down the pirate's body. From about where the, the bottom of the chin is, I'm going to draw two lines coming straight out from the beard on both sides. Two lines over here, two lines over here. And then I'm going to draw a circle. Don't worry if it's not a perfect circle. It doesn't have to be. Now inside each one of those circles, I'm going to draw another smaller circle inside of that first one. And then I'm going to draw some up and down lines all the way across the edge of that. To make this decorative feature called epaulets. Epaulets comes from the French word for a shoulder, epaulet, uh, which is where these decorations would go. The next thing I want to do here, I'm going to draw a line that drops down from the head, another one that drops down from the head, one that goes out, one that goes out, and then connects to the epaulets, just like that. So basically we're drawing two rectangles. Now inside each rectangle here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw half a hot dog shape. We're going to draw half a hot dog, half a hot dog, half a hot dog. I'm putting three, but if you can fit four or five or 1600, however many you want to put there, that's okay. Inside each one of these, at the very end, I'm going to put a circle, and another circle, and another circle. All right, Same seven. thing on the other side. Half a hot dog shape, half a hot dog shape, half a hot dog shape with circles all the way around. Arch is looking like a fine pirate coach now it is. Now sometimes pirates would wear a frilly lacy cravat or something around their neck to imitate and make fun of the upper class people at the time. Maybe they just like the way it looked. We still sort of do it sometimes. Sometimes you'll see people wearing colored cloth around their necks. It's called a tie. But pirates ties looked a little bit different than ties today. I'm gonna draw a line that goes out, a line that goes out, and kind of just a wavy line in between. What I'm going to do next, another line, and another line inside that. And then I'm just going to repeat all of those shapes slightly below it. A line that goes out, a line that goes out, a curvy line, and a couple of lines in between there. Next thing we need to do, we need to arm our pirate. <laughs> Giving them some arms. So what I'm going to do on this side, I'm going to draw a line that goes down, short line, Another line that goes right below it. And then I'm going to kind of angle it up on the side. Kind of a wide letter V. On this arm, I'm just going to do two lines straight down. Now, pirates often had big cuffs on their coats. I'm going to put just a trapezoid shape. One line, 
kind of looks like a little bit like a flower pot at the end of each hand here. Same thing here, a long line, lines that kind of go in, across, like that. The same kind of hot dog shape that I put on the coat, I want to put on the cuffs. So what I'm going to do right here, I'm going to start from the bottom of this. Half a hot dog shape with a circle. Half a hot dog shape with a circle. And of course, same thing. Half of a hot dog shape, half a hot dog shape with a circle and a circle. The lacy frilly shirts that the pirates would be wearing would also have frilly lacy cuffs. So what I'm going to do here is a short little line that angles out and then a roughly line in between them. Same thing over here, short roughly line, wavy line in between them. Now if I want my pirate to look like he's grasping a sword, uh, and if I just look closely at what the hand is doing there, you can see the thumb on the top and we can see the fingers wrapped around the sword's handle. I'm going to just draw a circle right over here. And I'm going to draw a line that comes in and goes down. Sort of looks a little bit like the thumb. And then I'm going to draw just two or three little lines across here to look like the fingers. I have to show the hand guard up top and the pommel. That's the part down here. The handle is bigger than the hand. That way you have a chance to grab onto it. I'm going to make this pirate sword a bit like his mustache. So what I'm going to do here is a line that curves up and makes a spiral, a line that curves up and makes a spiral on those edges, and I'm going to connect them in the middle by just drawing a line across it. Let's down see. at the bottom of this hand, I'm going to draw two short little lines with a circle down at the bottom. And then what I'm going to do is draw two lines that go up, not too far. I don't want to make it a huge, 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 huge two-handed claymore sword or something like that. A small cutlass, if you will. And then up at the very top, I want to put just an upside down letter V to make it where it's pointy. Oftentimes, a sword would be divided into two sections, uh, kind of a different angle there. I'm going to put an upside down letter V and a line that goes all the way up through the center of that. Now, we might want to put a hook here for our, uh, our pirate, like Captain Hook. Perhaps he suffered an unfortunate accident at sea. And of course, what I could do here is just put two short little lines about three quarters of a circle here and about three quarters of a circle there for the hook. Our pirate hasn't gotten his sea legs yet. In fact, he doesn't have any legs yet. Let's fix that. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to start at the middle. I'm going to give him a cummerbund uh, or a, uh, a sash around his middle. I'm going to start by just drawing a rectangle underneath a little bit narrower than the coat is and then up a little bit from the bottom of the coat, I'm going to draw a line that goes across it. I might want to put three or four little lines across it like that to show where the folds of cloth are on this sash. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line that goes down, a line that goes down over here, a zigzag line that goes in, a zigzag line that goes in over here, and an upside down letter V for the top of the pants, the top of the legs. Right now, it looks like, a, like our pirate was standing too close to a cannon when it fired, but we'll take care of that. If you're running out of room at the bottom of your picture the same way I am, it's okay. You can just let your drawing go off the bottom edge of the page. Regardless of whether or not you have enough room to draw the boots, let me show you how you draw the top edge of the boots. Because pirate boots would fold over at the top. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw a flat line with a line that kind of goes out to make a trapezoid shape. Same thing over here. Two lines that go out, connect with a flat line. And then what I'm going to do to show the calf, the top part of the leg, from the knee down, I'm going to draw two more lines that go down and get closer together. If yours has to go off the bottom edge of your page, that's okay. And you can just fast forward to the end of this part right here. Let me show you how to draw some pirate boots for those of you that have room. I'm going to start a line, not quite at the edge, I'm just going to come back a little bit from it. Draw two lines that kind of come down and get a little bit closer towards each other. Same thing over here. Two lines like that. We're going to do things a little bit differently than we did boots for our Space Explorer. So I'm going to have the, the lines kind of going out to the sides to show the feet. 
where the pirate is standing. So I'm going to draw some lines that go down, and then this one kind of goes a little bit more straight down. Same thing over here, a little bit straight down, kind of out on that side. Now what I'm going to do is a line that goes down and hooks back to show to attach to that. Same thing here, a line that goes down, goes back to hook back. Now if you want to have buckles on their boots, you can do that as well. Buckles are simple. All you have to do is put a square with a square inside of it, a square with a square inside of it. That makes the boots. Now, I know there are some of you that might be thinking of Long John Silver, the pirate from Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island. By the way, both a great book and a great movie. If you be thinking of a pirate that has a peg leg, let me show you how you could draw that. I'm going to just take one of these legs away because generally pirates wouldn't have two peg legs. They would have one good one and one wooden one. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to draw a line across them, and then I'm going to put a half circle underneath that. From there, what I'm going to do is draw two lines that get a little bit closer to each other and come down about the same length as a foot. You don't want it a whole lot shorter, you don't want it a whole lot longer, or the pirate would have a very hard time standing up. Well, I guess if the seas were rough, maybe it would work, maybe it would help. To make this look like a wooden leg, is put some little up and down lines like that to show the wood grain, and maybe the same kind of thing over here, to make it look like a wooden leg. I once knew a man with a wooden leg named Smith. Now to make it look like they're standing in sand or soft dirt, what I like to do is a little line of frowns uh, at the bottom edge of that and maybe the same thing over here just to make it look a little bit more like the feet are sunken down into it. So that's how you draw the pirate's boot and perhaps a wooden leg if you care to. One more thing I want to do with my pirate before we leave for other ports. I'm going to put just half a circle over here to the edge with two or three little lines in it to sort of look like a knot of cloth. And then what I'm going to do is kind of a curvy line that goes off one side and a curvy line that kind of comes down to meet it. And then another curvy shape that starts about halfway down to sort of look like a fold of or two of cloth coming off that side. We've finished with our pirate, we're ready to move into the background. Now if you'll remember from our outer space drawing and our undersea drawing, the foreground is things that are close to you, the background is things that are farther away from you. I always like to start off in the foreground because that way I don't have to erase things, uh, I can just draw around them. First, I'm going to draw a palm tree. I always like to draw palm trees. I'm going to start a little bit higher up than my pirate's shoulder. To make things look farther away in a picture, you can make them smaller and put them higher up. That'll do the trick. So, so I'm going to start a little bit higher than my pirate's shoulder over here on the right side of the page. I'm going to draw a line that goes up and curves in, and another line a little ways from it curves up and in doesn't quite touch but comes close. Now across the bottom edge of my palm tree here I'm gonna just draw a little line of frowns. Mm. Now from the very top edge of my palm tree I'm gonna draw not one, not two, not three, not four, maybe five lines coming from it. Looks a little bit like an umbrella right now. That's the start of each palm frond or the great big leaf. Now what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to do a zigzag line that kind of just goes out, back, out, back, out, back, joins to the very tip, out, back, out, back, out, back, like that. Hmm, suddenly I want steak. Alright, so we're going to try another one here, a zigzag line. Alright, same thing at the bottom edge. It's kind of like a row of letter V's. <laughs> And then for the palm tree itself, a line that goes down, then slants the other way, then the first way, then the second way, then the other way. All 
the way down. By the way, if you want to draw more than one palm tree, you're welcome to put three or four or twenty or however many palm trees you want to. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to show sort of sand dune or a line of the beach going down towards the water. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to start a, a little bit more than halfway up my page, about three quarters of the way if you know anything about fractions. I'm going to start a line that just kind of goes out, draw around your palm tree, I'm going to draw around my pirate, around the hand, things like that, and just bring it down off the other side. It doesn't really matter where. Next thing I want, I think I need to put a pirate's treasure chest in here. If you've watched our underwater drawing, you might remember how to draw a treasure chest that's open. I'm going to show you a slightly different one here, how to draw a treasure chest that's closed. Over here on this side of my page, I have some blank space. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to start my treasure chest by drawing a line that goes up, goes across, and comes back down. Now across the bottom edge of that to look like it's sunk down in the sand, I'm going to put a row of frowny lines, just like I did with my palm tree. Now on one side of this, it doesn't really matter which side, uh, but what you're going to do is draw a line that goes up, angles up to the right or left, whichever, and then comes back down. Not quite as far down as the first ones, and then what I'm going to do is take these frowny lines up to meet it. At the top of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a curved line that goes up and back down. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to draw a straight line and put a curved line up to meet it. That's the curved top of a pirate's treasure chest. By the way, it's not really just necessarily a pirate's treasure chest. It's just called a sea chest. And a sea chest had a curved top on it so you wouldn't set anything on top of it. That way you could always open it up and get to whatever was inside of it. A flat surface will often have things put on top of it. I want this treasure chest to look like it's locked. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to start by putting an upside down U shape with a flat line that's bigger than that U shape and another right side up U shape by that. I need to show the keyhole on that lock. So what I'm going to do here is a circle with a triangle underneath it. We want the treasure chest to look like it has metal bands all the way around it. So what I'm going to do is a line that goes up, goes across, draw around your lock, goes back down. On every side here, what I'm going to do is go up, across, back down. Sort of like making little rectangles. And from the top here, I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to do a line that goes parallel to this curved line. Goes across and right back up. Same thing over here. A flat line. A D-shaped letter curve line. I can put some letter C's around here to look like the bolts holding it together. We all know that a pirate's favorite letter is the C. You know a pirate's second favorite letter, right? Arrrr! So I'm gonna put some C's here. I don't really count. Maybe it's seven. Is that the seven C's? Could be. And to make the chest look like it's made out of wood, I can put some lines across it. Just two or three with some lighter wood grain shapes inside that. Lines of wood grain aren't really random. They kind of go in one direction with an occasional knot or spiral in it. Next thing I want to do is I want to put some water in my picture so I can get my pirate ship back there. So I'm going to start on this side of my page now, about halfway up my page, and I'm just going to draw a flat line, draw around the sword, and just have it meet the sand dune wherever it does. It really doesn't make that much difference. I'm ready to start my pirate ship. So over here on this side of my page, I'm going to start by just putting a straight line coming up out of the water that's going to turn right, go straight, dip down, and make sort of a half a circle and continues a little bit further forward and then curves down to meet the water. 
looks a little bit like a wooden shoe right at first. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a letter V, a skinny pointy letter V off the front for the bowsprit and then I'm about ready to put the sails on my ship. I'm going to draw two short little lines that kind of go up and then what I'm going to do is a curved line from the deck of the ship to meet those two lines and back down to meet the ship. From here I'm going to angle a line up and in, up and in on that side, connect them at the top with a flat line. Now I'm going to repeat that shape two or three different times. Now if you can fit three of them, that's great. If you can only fit two of them before they get too skinny, that's okay too. Now at the front of this, I want to draw a triangle right here with a curved bottom edge for that front sail. The jib, I believe it's called. The, the pirate ships might have two or three masts depending on the type of ship and depending on the construction. Since I have enough space here to have three masts, I'm going to make mine a fairly big pirate ship and make it a three-master. So I'm going to repeat this idea. Two lines for the mast, a curved line, then a line that goes up, across, and back down. Now here, it's bumping into my front sails. Sometimes the way the ships would work, you would sort of see them at an angle, or the sails themselves would have to be tilted to catch the wind properly. Same thing again. I'm going to draw a curved line, line that goes up and in, line that goes up and in, flat line across the top. And of course, we could probably fit another one there in the middle one a trapezoid with a curved bottom edge. Now it's looking like a pirate ship, isn't it? Arr, she be fair. One more time back here, same thing. In these little curved spaces, if you want to show where the mast goes up, you can do that. So you just imagine where these lines would continue, and you just draw two little lines in there, two little lines. Now, what if you want to show the top of the masts? You can do that. I put a little upside down letter V right there, a little upside down letter V, upside down letter V. On this very top one, the middle one, where I'm going to put what's called a crow's nest. I'm going to draw a small little trapezoid shape up at the very top. That's where the lookout might go. And from the middle of that, I'm going to put one more line. Now, if I had a flag flying from the top of my pirate ship, I could put one. But here's the tricky part about it. A pirate ship works on the principle of wind pushing the sails. So a flag doesn't go backwards on a pirate ship, it goes forwards on a pirate ship because that's the direction the wind is blowing. Ah, I didn't think about that, did you? So what I'm going to do here from the top of my pirate ship, I'm going to just draw a kind of a wavy edge rectangle. Remember how we drew the, uh, the Jolly Roger, the skull and crossbones? If you can fit it, if you can draw itty bitty tiny little lines, you can do the same thing up here on top of that, uh, of that Jolly Roger. If you can't fit it, it's okay. It doesn't really matter. A lot of times the pirates wouldn't fly a skull and crossbones flag, but in fact they would fly a red flag. The French word for pretty red, like pretty red flag, was joli rouge. Which, if you kind of look at the way it's spelled, joli means pretty, rouge means red. But, if you kind of say it the way it looks, it looks a little bit like it says, Jolly Raja, doesn't it? Hmm, that could be where the name comes from. We're ready to put some reflections, some waves, because water is not a smooth surface. It has ridges, it has ripples, it has waves, it has undulating lines and things like that. I like to just sort of go with some smiley lines linked together. Three or four little smiley lines sort of scattered here or there to give an indication of where the water is. What if you want to show that there are sharks in the water? Are there be sharks in these waters? You don't really see much of a shark above the water, but what you do see is the fin popping up. So what I'm going to do here is curve a line up and back and then I'm going to curve a line the other direction and back down to meet the water. Let's return for a second to our ship. For one thing, it doesn't look like a wooden ship yet, and pirate ships were made out of wood. So what I'm going to do here first, I'm going to draw some lines going all the way across my ship. 
not a million lines, just, you know, three or four to make it look like boards. Now, in between the boards, what I like to do, every so often I'm going to put just a little up and down line. You don't want them to line up and you don't want too many of them or it looks like your ship's made out of bricks. And a brick ship doesn't float really well. Believe me, I know, I built one before. Now, if you want to show little nail holes in between, you could to look like it's made out of wood. What if you want to show the gun ports where the cannons might stick out through the, uh, through the pirate ship? Alright, I'm glad you asked. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a square in between some of these boards and I'm going to put a circle inside of that to look like you're looking down the barrel of a cannon. And then of course you can put a dot inside the middle of that. If I were coloring this in, I would probably color in the square part around the circle. I'd color that black. Now what I want to do next, I want to move further back into my background. Remember what I said about making things look like they're farther away? You make them smaller and you put them higher up. So I'm going to start another line up above where my water line is. I'm going to go just a little bit further up. I'm going to draw a line that starts on this side of my page goes all the way across, draw around your pirate ship, draw around your pirate, draw around, if you need to, over there. And what I'm going to do here next to move further back into my background, I'm going to show some islands or some mountains back there. So I might make a line that goes up and comes back down. Then over here on the other side of my ship, I might draw another line that goes up, comes down, goes up again, comes back down. And I might even show another couple over here if I have room for them. Goes up, comes down, goes up off the page if you'd like. You can do that. I need this to look like water and right now it doesn't. So what I'm going to do is draw some more wavy lines to look more like water. Now, up in the sky, I might want to put some clouds. There's kind of a fun way I like to put clouds. I like to just start with a flat line straight line. And then what I do off one side is I curve a line up and then into a spiral. And then I'm going to put two or three little frowny lines overlapping. And then on the other side I might curve another line up and into a spiral. And any space that I have in between I would connect them with just a spiral or another frowny line. That makes a cloud. How many clouds should I put? as many as you think you need. So I might put another one over here in this blank space. What if the bottom edge curves? It's okay. All right? Same thing. I'm going to curve a line up into a spiral. Two or three little frowny lines. Line up into a spiral. I've got some space here, so I might want to put something else in my picture. And you know what I think I want to put in my picture? A crab. I want to put a crab right there. So I'm going to start my crab by just drawing a frowny line. All right, Just a frowny line. And then underneath that, I'm going to put a smiley line. So what I'm going to do here next, I'm going to put two lines coming up on this side, two lines coming up on this side, and I'm going to put a circle at the top of each one of those. Circle here, a circle here for the eyes. If you want your crab to be looking at the pirate, we could put a little dot over on this side, a little dot over on this side. And you could make your crab happy if you wanted to with a smile. Or if you want your crab to be crabby, you can put a frown on it. Let's make him a crabby crab. Now, if you want to be a really crabby crab, give him some eyebrows, but make the eyebrows slant in like this. Oh, that looks like a mean crab now. Whenever I think about crabs, I think about pinchers on the crab. So what I'm going to do here, on this side, I'm going to draw a little circle, a little circle over here, and a letter U shape on its side. A letter U shape on its side right there. And then I'm going to draw a letter V inside that U shape. But I'm going to make the edges of that letter V all wibbly wobbly waggly. Let me show you like that, and again, like this. The 
crab sort of looks like he's just floating there, so I want to give some other little legs to the crab. So I'm going to do two or three little lines right here, two or three little lines right here. Now we have our treasure chest, we have our pirate, we have our palm tree. We are just about done. One more thing you might want to do. Now, this is not something you have to do, but it's something you might want to. We know that pirates sometimes wore an eye patch over one of their eyes. A couple of different reasons for this. One, if they lost an eye, they might want to keep things from getting out of it. But I've heard a theory that the under decks of a pirate ship were very dark because they didn't have electrical lights. And the outside in the bright sunlight was very bright. So what they would do sometimes with an eye patch they would cover it up so that eye would be used to the dark. So when they got down below decks and they couldn't see because this eye was used to all the bright light, they would flip up their eye patch and that way they could see when they were under a deck. Pretty smart, really. If you want to put an eye patch on your pirate, just pick one eye or the other and you can put a letter U right over where the eye is and then we'll just fill that in colored in. And you might put a little diagonal line there too to show how it's tied in. You know how I usually say if you want to put one or two or three, uh, but with eye patches you pretty much want to stick with one. If you put two, it's problematic. And if you put three, it's just silly. We are ready to sign our picture now. And of course, I always like to sign down in the bottom right hand corner. Thanks for watching, thanks for drawing along, hope you enjoyed this pirate picture. As always, if you like this, be sure to hit subscribe so you keep up to date with any of the new drawing videos that I have for you. Keep an eye out, or at least two eyes, well, or at least one eye if you've got an eye patch. Keep an eye out for Quest for the Golden Butterfly, out soon, any second now. So soon I can't even tell you, I'm actually just checking my mail every single day for the boxes. From Tiki Fez Comics, thanks a lot, and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.